God. What a reminder. We are not alone. It may feel like that at moments. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for guiding our dear sister Natalie in this. There are times when things look rough, when there aren't too many people around, when the beloved ones forsake you. But it's good to remember there's someone who says, I shall never leave you, never forsake you. Thank you so much, Sister Natalie. Praise the Lord. A few announcements before we go into the word that uh, the SoCal Christian Medical Dinner Meeting is upon us on the 30th of this month. Pastor Muhammad will be with us on that day and he'll be with us the Sunday after. So please plan on being with us. This is a beautiful dinner. We're having it at Hometown Buffet in uh, Downey. It's a free event. It's a paid for event. So come, enjoy, and bring other people with you. So I'll leave those here in the front and you can uh, pick up one if you don't have one. Invite other people with you. And then Sunday that follows, Pastor Muhammad will be with us. Pastor Muhammad is becoming very well known. He is being asked to speak at different places. Uh, I even heard that Greg Laurie is inviting him to speak and he's already, his, his uh, uh, fame is spreading that there's such a pastor by that name who is having a very living church in the city of Tyre and many people are coming to the Lord through him so pray for him, pray for his protection as he travels, he comes here, arrives on Thursday evening, he'll be with us Friday, he'll be appearing on uh, a TV show on Friday morning and then Friday evening he'll be with us at the SoCal Christian Medical. Saturday he's invited to another church to speak and then Sunday he'll be with us and Sunday afternoon soon that he, le he finishes he will go to another church and then he flies away from here. So make sure you come and see what the Holy Spirit has been doing in the lives of people like Pastor Muhammad and through Pastor Muhammad. Our Meetings have resumed Wednesday. We have a meeting and uh, we will have a good movie on this Wednesday. Uh, the reason we try to put at least one movie a month or two movies a month because it's still kind of hot. Have you noticed? It's still hot and I think it's hard to sit down and be contained. Uh, but, uh, but also the movies are very good in prompting us to walk closer to the Lord. So there will be a movie this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And... Uh, on uh, Friday, we have the meeting of uh, the prayer. We concluded the discipleship class and uh, there will be a class that will be graduating in a couple of weeks. You'll see them here, uh, Lord willing. But also we will be starting in a couple of weeks uh, another class for Theology 3. We finished Theology 1, Theology 2, we did the true discipleship. Now there will be Theology 3. If you haven't taken Theology 1 and 2, that doesn't mean you cannot jump into Theology 3. You can. Because these are basic doctrines. The doctrines of the humanity of Jesus, the deity of Jesus, salvation, uh, church life, etc., etc. And it progresses to higher and higher doctrines. So I encourage you to come and be part of that class if you like. It'll be at Friday starting at 7.30, goes to 8.30. So Theology 3 will be starting. And... Uh, Thank God that the Jashans are here in our midst. Brother Nabil lost his mom last week. And uh, I want to tell you something about his mom from this pulpit that I sat with her several times and she prayed with me and she went to be with her Lord. So we praise the Lord for that and we thank God for the Jashan family who is having consolation by the Holy Spirit that this separation is not only for a short while. So please offer condolences to Brother Nabil at the end of the meeting, shake hands with him and tell him that his mom is alive. Although she parted from, this, from the flesh, but she's alive in the spirit. Other people are missing here in our midst today. They have emergency things. Some are sick. Some are traveling. We pray for them. Pray for the end of the summer that we all be rejoicing as fall really has begun and we be all with one spirit and one mind. Let's all stand up if you don't mind. We're going to reread those verses that brother Cedric read before us. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. The message is in those verses for us today. Let's read. In the beginning 
was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Number two. He was in the beginning with God. Verse three. All things came into being through Him. And apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Verse four. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. I'll ask Brother Labib to lead us in a word of prayer. To lead us into the presence of God. That God's presence will become manifest this morning in our midst. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. Every time we come to your table, you offer us good food that sustains our souls as we go through the journey of life among different cultures, uh, among different personalities. You are our source of power not to be affected, influenced by others. You are the one who gives us that energy inside us and the zeal and the love to share what we have found in you, to share our joy in you, our uh, love that we are enjoying daily with you, the fellowship with you. You are the one who gives us the wisdom how to communicate these great things that every soul needs around us. And we ask you, Lord, to give us that sensitivity to always feel their need and their hunger for your word. You are the only one who can sustain them in their, their different circumstances. You are the one who has been with us all of these years. Sometimes you allow in your wisdom that we go through the narrow ways through difficult, uh, difficulties and hardship, you had the power and uh, to rescue us and not to let us go through those hard times, but in your wisdom, you allowed us to go through it. We pray to the Lord that you give your uh, servant today the words that we each one of us need. Use the one who can feed each soul in this place today and those who will uh, hear this message in different ways on, on internet and others. We ask this in your name, Lord, to help us to focus and pay attention to everything you have to say to us this morning and to go and apply to our life. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord for John's gospel. Last week, several people in this church, some are missing today, made a covenant that we're going to start reading John's gospel together. So I know some of you are reading John's gospel with me, and I couldn't help it but stop at the first few verses of John's gospel. Because in those few verses that we read today, there is a truth that is simple enough to be grasped by the smallest child and yet there is a truth that is above the brain of the most literate in this world. The truth that Jesus Christ is God. That's right. The truth that is beyond the imagination of any human being that Jesus Christ is God. So, John begins his gospel with that one verse, John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. It's a great truth. It's as if John is beginning his gospel by saying the deity of Jesus Christ is a non-negotiable truth. I want to begin my gospel by telling you what it's all about. 
It's about Jesus being God. I want you to know that from the beginning of my gospel. John's gospel was written with a purpose. A clear spelled purpose. He tells it in John chapter 20 verse 31. He says, this is the purpose why I am writing this gospel. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. You see, John said, I want to do my best to convince people that Jesus Christ is God and that believing in this, they will have eternal life, enjoy eternal life, live as they have eternal life. And I would like to be faithful to John's intent and purpose. So today, and every time I'll be bringing messages from the Gospel of John, I'd like to bring the same intent to bring you to be more anchored in your faith in believing that Jesus Christ is God and to bring you to be more anchored in living the life as children of God through Jesus Christ. Pray for me that I do this and pray with me that God will accomplish that in our midst in this church. Today, we get a taste of John's gospel from verses 1 through 5. It's like a, a little appetizer, but it's a very, very nut nourri nutritious appetizer. In those verses, there's a point that is being made. And if we are to see that point, we need to take those verses in reverse. Because the point is at the end of those verses, and the first verses are to prove that point. So let's look at the point that these verses, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, are trying to tell us today. Look at verse 5, the point. The point of those verses is that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. I like other translations that say did not overcome it because I think it tells you that there is a struggle between light and darkness but light will always overcome darkness darkness can never overcome the light this word comprehend translated overcome is a Greek word which is katalambano now, that same word was used also by the Lord in John chapter 12, verse 35. We can understand it even more there. John 12, 35 says, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. John 12, 35. Walk lest the darkness will not what? Overtake you. That is the same word in Greek, which is translated comprehend, overcome, overtake. Subdue. Subdue. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. So you could label John chapter 1 verse 5. Let's look back at John chapter 1 verse 5. You could label it that light will always triumph over darkness. The light will always overcome the darkness. Darkness can never overcome the light. Why? Why is this the case? You would say, how come? So the verses 1 to 4 tells us why it's always the case. Those verses give us three reasons why the light will always overcome the darkness. Why darkness can never overcome the light. Light will always triumph over darkness. I think that's good news for us. Because we are children of the light. We are on the winning side. The light will always overcome the darkness. The first reason 
why light will always overcome the darkness is that the light is the life of the son of god it says in verse four remember we're taking them backwards in him in christ the word in him was life and the life was the light of man you see this is not static light this is living light and the reason it is living light because it is the very life of the son of god jesus christ is the light of the world he says it in john chapter 8 verse 12 he says jesus spoke to them again saying i am what the light of the world he who follows me will not walk in the darkness but will have the light of life he's saying i am the light jesus is the light he is the one who shines in the darkness the darkness which is the evil which is the judgment which is the condemnation of this world john chapter 3 verse 19 says and this is the condemnation this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil darkness is evil but the light will always shine and overcome overcome the darkness verse 5 assures us that the light will be triumphant and this is what this verse assures us as well and many other verses tell us that light will always triumph over darkness john 12 36 the lord jesus says while you have the light believe in the light look believe in the light that you may become sons of light you see the light has life and it produces life not only it is a living light but whatever whoever it touches it gives him life and makes him sons of light you see it is birthing more people into that light these things Jesus spoke as he went away and hid himself from them. And look at John chapter 12, verse 46. I have come, says Jesus, as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me, what? Will not remain in darkness. Darkness will be overcome by the light. The light will triumph. And that means Jesus and all those who believe in Jesus will triumph over the darkness of this world in America we need to hear this in America today don't we raise your hand don't we need to hear this in America folks things don't look good in America today when the American Supreme Court ruled five to four last June that the Constitution required that same-sex couples be allowed to marry no matter where they live that the states cannot stop them anymore i want to tell you we realized we're going on the wrong path and then when our the white house itself celebrated this was lit up in rainbow colors to celebrate this supreme court ruling last june we realize that it's not only few people this is the american culture entirely that is going in the wrong direction what do we do what are we supposed to do we christians i want to tell you that we are the children of the light and i'd like to stake my life on this that the light will triumph over darkness that we Christians need to stand because our light will overcome the darkness. It may look bad right now, but we Christians need to stand and realize that we have the power. I say the power to change things if we believe it. That's right. He said in Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14, if my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves turn from their evil way and pray deny god who controls everything i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and i will heal their land our god is in control 
the light will triumph over the darkness. We need to believe it and we need to live it. And verse 4 tells us why it will happen. It says in John chapter 1 verse 4, it says, because in him was life and the life was the light of men. You see that light is living light and it is the life of the Son of God. It's a light that has power. It's a light that has purpose. And it's a light that produces more light. It's occupying new territory every single day. I want to tell you every day when one person comes to Christ, he's forever in the light. I want to tell you when Pastor Muhammad came to the light in the city of Tyre, he began beaming light throughout that city. And God is planting lights in every part of the world because the light will overcome the darkness because it has life in it. So the first reason why the light shines in the darkness and will overcome the darkness and darkness can never overcome the light because it is the life of the Son of God. And the second reason from those verses why this life that is bringing the light is the life it will overcome the darkness because it is the life of the creator of everything look at verse 3 John chapter 1 verse 3 says all things would you read that with me I mean we need to believe this folks all things came into being through who through him and apart from him Nothing came into being that has come into being. Guess who created everything? Jesus Christ. That's right. He's talking about Jesus. He's the creator. You tell me, how come darkness cannot overcome the light? Because the light created everything, including the darkness. You know that the evil spirits were created by God. That's right. That's why when Lucifer, who was created by Christ, wanted to overcome God and overtake his throne, that was a folly. Lucifer was an idiot to even try to overtake the one who created him. No created being is ever more powerful than his creator. I repeat, no created being is ever more powerful than his creator. The creator will always overcome. So this light will overcome darkness because it's the light of the creator of everything. Listen, if you can make something out of nothing, then you can make that something into nothing whenever you want. God who created something will also make that something into nothing whenever he wants. The evil spirits knew that all along. See, they knew that they only have a short time when they are let loose. When the Lord Jesus came to the Gadarenes, demoniacs, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 29, he was met by two wild people inhabited by evil spirits but look what they told him they cried out saying what business do we have with each other son of god have you come here to torment us before the time you see they knew that there's a time that's been appointed unto them where they're going to be taken and thrown into hell the evil spirits know that they know that they have a short time when they can are let loose in this world there's an appointed time they know that there's a time that is set for the destruction for their everlasting consignment into hell they know it because the creator is the one who's in control that light will always overcome the darkness not only because it's the life of the one of the son of god but it's also the light of the one who created everything including the power of darkness and the third reason and we get it from our verses why light will always overcome the darkness 
not only because it is the life of the Son of God, not only because it is the light of the one who created everything, but because it is also the life, the light, the word is God himself. God Almighty is the light. And nobody can overcome God. Nobody can ever, can ever overwhelm God. Verse 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice here, there is a distinction and there is a unity at the same time. We're not talking about the same person. There are two persons here. God the Father and God the Son. There are two distinct persons. They are in communion, in fellowship. That's why I feel sorry for the gods of the pagans. Any other religion, they tell you there's a solo, in solitude God of ours. I say, what a lonely God you have. Our God, the triune God, is always in fellowship. Three persons in one. You see, the distinction, he was with God. But not as the unity. But the word was God. Not as the unity. There's distinction and there's unity. Those two persons are one God. One God. Jesus Christ is God. Notice that we hold on to this biblical mystery that God the Father, God the Son have such a unity that they are one God, not two, and yet there is a distinction that there are two persons, not one. How? I tell you, I don't know. It's a mystery, but this is our God, the God we worship. So, what does that do to us today to know that the light will always triumph? Because that light is alive. It's a living light. It has the life of the Son of God. And that light is the light of the creator of everything. And that light is the light of God Almighty himself. Let's read those verses again. I think it will make more sense to read them. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things came into being through him. And apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. Verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not, cannot, will not comprehend, overtake, overwhelm. Light will always triumph over darkness. I say be of good cheer this morning. Rejoice, put on a smile and be vibrant for Jesus because you are the sons of the light. Therefore go. And occupy this world for Jesus. Occupy those hearts for Jesus. Bring the light to other people around you. Tell them that Jesus is God. That's right. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Tell them that Jesus is God who was manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, And without controversy great is the mystery of godliness that what that God was manifested first Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 that God was manifested in the flesh and then it says other things he was revealed in the flesh vindicated in the spirit seen by angels proclaimed among the nations believed in the world Taken up to glory. This was nothing but God himself. The creator of everything. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 confirms it also. It says for by him all things were created. That one in heaven and that one with earth. Visible, invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. You see, the creator is also the redeemer. He's the one who comes to forgive your sins and make you fit for heaven. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning 
and the end. He's the great I am. He has all the attributes of God. He's unchangeable, all powerful. He knows all and he's present everywhere. In his great commission in uh, Matthew chapter 28, he ends it with that last verse, 28, 20. He says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. That is that word always. Even to the end of the age. Do we truly believe this? I tell you, if we truly believe this, we will live a different life. If it truly hits us, we should be living a different life. We belong to the one who knows all, who's capable of all, and who's always with us to rescue us. Are we in communion with him? Do we talk to him? Do you talk to him? Are you spending time in prayer with him? I want to tell you, those who are in communion with God will live lives that make sense that are fruitful. I encourage you, spend time with the one who loves you and who's your God and who knows all. Why are we starved nowadays when Jesus Christ has everything we need? Why is there drought in this land? And we have the answer for this land to bring, bring waters to flood that land. Waters of mercy and waters of salvation. Light will always overcome the darkness and we are children of the light. I'll say let's bow down before him again today. Let us worship him. Let's give him the glory. Let's tell him this is our greatest privilege to belong to you and to serve you who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Light will triumph over darkness. Be of cheer, child of God. Go boldly on your knees and occupy new territory for Jesus even today. Now a last and closing word for those who are still not sure if they belong to the light. You see, God has decreed that only those who belong to the light will not be condemned, will not suffer judgment, you see, God has ordained a white, great white throne that one day every single human being will stand before it who's not saved yet. That's right. And they will give account about every thought, every word, every action, every, everything they have done, thought, or said. Can you imagine? The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 10, if anyone keeps the entire law, but offends in one, he's guilty of all. I want to tell you, I always ask people, have you ever sinned one sin? They say, oh yeah. One sin they confess to one. Maybe not many, but at least one. I say, you know what? You're as guilty as the one who broke all the laws. Everybody who will stand before the great white throne will be found guilty, worthy of judgment. But God loves us. He doesn't want you to have judgment. That's why he prolonged your life till now. Because he doesn't want you to have judgment. He wants you to be saved. I got saved. I will not stand before the great white throne. Oh no. Because Jesus Christ took my place and he got judged instead of me on the cross. And you too can be sure today that you belong to the light. If you put your trust, your entire trust in Jesus Christ, God Almighty, who was manifested in the flesh, who went to the cross and took your place on that cross to pay for your sins, and then he rose from the dead. And he's here in this place to say, I want you to make a choice and belong to me. Receive me, and you will not come into condemnation. John chapter 3 verse 36 says, He who believes in the Son of God has everlasting life. And he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Listen, Jesus Christ did not fool people. He said, you have one of two choices. Either you follow the narrow road. That's right. 
It could be a difficult road. It could be a road where you have to give up your sins. You have to give up some friends. You have to give up habits. You have to give up things in your life. It's a narrow road. The road of Christ, the road of salvation. And you'll be spared judgment, guaranteed heaven. Or you can go into the easy road. That's right. Do what everybody is doing. And it's a road that will lead into condemnation. It's a road to hell. <laughs> there are two kingdoms. Either the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. We are born in the kingdom of darkness, but we make a choice, a clear choice one day. We realize that we're heading in the wrong way. We hear about Jesus, the one who created us and who redeemed us and who paid for our sins. And we make a clear choice and we say, Lord Jesus, I want to belong to you from here on. I'd like anybody who's not sure that he or she belonged to that kingdom of light today. I want to tell you, if you don't belong to the kingdom of light, you are on the losing end because the light will overcome the darkness. You are on the wrong side. You need to move from the kingdom of the darkness into the kingdom of the light by trusting today Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Let's bow before the Lord. Narrow is the way of salvation but it leads into heaven enter by that narrow gate narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life is the way of the light you choose that way you are a smart person today you are in that way then live it proclaim it and be in communion with the source of your light. I'd like to give an opportunity for anyone who says here, I'd like to recommit my life. I'd like to make sure I want to live it as part of this kingdom of light. I'd like to be a person who belongs to the light because light will overcome. I want to be of those who will overcome with Jesus. Light will overcome the darkness. It may not look good right now around us, but the day is coming when the light will overcome it all. And let it start with me today. I want the light to fill my heart. I want to live in the light. I want to live for the light. And I want to belong to Christ and live for Christ. Those who say, I have made that decision. I'd like to renew that decision. I'd like to live that decision. I'd like to make it anew today. Stand up in your place. And proclaim it publicly before God and his angels that you're truly a child of the light and you belong to the light and you want to live for the light. Father, we thank you this morning that you brought us to this place to let us know for sure that the light will overcome the darkness. Belonging to the light, we are on the winning side. Help us to live it. Help us to proclaim it. And help us to tell the world about the light that is came to us through Jesus Christ. Help us to be truly living that life of light. To shine in the midst of a dark and crooked generation. To be people who are true ambassadors of the one who began it all in us. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like everybody to stand if you don't mind.